Hey everybody, it's Marita Joyce, Reads Minds, and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to do a book review for I Will Not Fear by Melba Bills. This book was okay. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I originally wanted to read this book for Black History Month. I was like working on trying to read more books for Black History Month, um, written by African American authors. And I came across this book because I was listening to NPR one day on my way to the gym and this lady was on NPR talking about her experience and she's talking about um, integrating Central High School and there was a Central High School in my city so I automatically assumed that she was talking about the Central High School in my city. I got really excited wanted to read the book that she had written. This is one of two books. The other one is Warriors Don't Cry. And I never did get to Warriors Don't Cry. I have not read Warriors Don't Cry yet. I started with I Will Not Fear. Okay. So I Will Not Fear is set in the 1950s. And Melba Bill is one of, uh, Melba Bills is one of the Arkansas Nine. So basically she's one of the nine students that is attempting to integrate into Central High School in Arkansas in the 1950s. So she talks about the trials and tribulations, all of the racism, all of the Ku Klux Klan coming by to her house and doing horrible things, sending horrible messages, threatening violence, all these kinds of things that we've seen either in movies or that we've heard our parents or grandparents talk about that occurred that seems very far fetched and removed from our lives because we don't have those kinds of experiences that intensely um so that was one of the things that i thought she really captured in her book i thought she was very gracious in how um she handled those experiences those experiences never really stopped for her she went on to um further her education she um, went from high school, I think she ended up moving to California. She ended up having to leave Arkansas and go live in California with a completely different family. Her outlook on life was changed a bit. She got a different experience. The family that she moved in with in California was white family. So she had an opportunity to be exposed to white people who actually cared about her, who weren't racist. So it opened up her mind a lot and helped her to see the world in a different in a different way in comparison to the way she had seen the world coming from Arkansas and having the kind of experiences that she'd had. Um, the family treated her really well. Um, they were good to her. There's one thing that did occur is finally that she did go on to become like she wanted to be a radio broadcaster. I think she was trying to go to school of journalism and got accepted. And the father of the family, she went on to tell him about her experience. And she was basically explaining to him that she was going to be a radio broadcaster and that she had gotten accepted. And his response to her was kind of like, are you serious? Really? I know you don't really think you could be a radio broadcaster and not this in this day and age is what he kind of said to her so that was a disappointment and it was kind of an emotional setback for her because she had gone forward she met this family that was very loving kind they were completely different from some of the people that she had previously had experiences with and she thought that she had moved past that portion of her life and then come to find out she was disappointed that you know even within this family, they saw her as not being able to accomplish big things. So she still overcame that. She still had a great love for the family. She did go on to become a radio broadcasting personality. And she ended up getting accepted to Columbia University. She went on to get her doctorate. All of those things. One of the things I particularly liked about this book was that even through all her struggles, she was very, this book was very spiritual focused. It, she talked about God all the time and if you're not a very religious person, you're not a very spiritual person, you really don't care about those kinds of things, this book might come off as a little bit too religious for you. Um, so that's one of the things I can say about the book is that it's very, very, very God focused. Um, she's very deeply rooted in her faith and everything, any and everything that happens throughout her life in her book, it's attributed to God. She's very focused on that. 
So that's one thing. Another thing that I noticed is that this was a very emotionally stable woman and she's a very intelligent woman. She handled all of these situations with grace, but she was always still striving for education. She ended up getting married. She got married to a white gentleman after she moved to California. Um, it was just interesting how all of her whole life just kind of evolved from that point on. She had a baby. I think the daughter, her first daughter was named Kelly. And of course, this is a, a mixed a mixed child so she went through discrimination based on that she would go out and look for homes and things like that even in California and she would experience a tremendous amount of racism um, where you know they were trying to convince her not to buy houses these were things she could afford because she was moving up in life she was making more money she was getting better jobs and a lot of times even with all of her accomplishments she was still being discriminated against so and I and the way she handled those situations were just I mean they were really she's an admirable person in my opinion um, she had her child she had her daughter she ended up having to raise her daughter as a, as a single mother because her and the husband split the husband wanted her in the kitchen barefooted pregnant cleaning house taking care of things and that just was not her personality she was definitely more of an intellectual um she cared very deeply for her daughter i think she was a great mother but at the same time she just did not see herself as simply a mother she wanted to be you know a broadcaster she wanted to be a journalist she wanted to go on for her doctorate do those kinds of things so she did end up getting a doctorate in inter international multicultural education and she ended up getting the congressional gold medal for integrating Central High School. She also, let's see, she was a magazine writer for Family Circle. I think that may be like some magazine in California or something, I'm not sure. And People Magazine. So during her time at, um, at Central High School, one of my favorite parts of the book is when she's trying to integrate the high school and of course she's getting spit on she's getting kicked at one point her and her mother were afraid for their lives they were being chased by a mob who were just they were just hell-bent on killing them um she escaped that situation with her life and the next time she she went a long period of time where she couldn't come to school because the NAACP was like, no, it's too dangerous. Let's just, you know, kind of sit back until we can get control of the situation again and then go back again. So the next time I think she missed like a couple of months or whatever out of school. The next time she went back to school at that time, the president sent out the I think it was the 101 first airborne of the U.S. Army to protect them. And she called them angels in combat boots. And that, that was like one of my favorite parts of the story because now you start to see Melva develop. She's emotionally starting to get stronger. And she goes from being this scared little girl who was just as timid as she could be to being, you know, this really strong black woman who wasn't afraid of anything and was ready to take on the world. And so I really liked watching her transform and make that transformation. And so she had an, a soldier assigned to her and the soldier would teach her different things about how to act, how to carry herself so that, you know, even though these people are like spitting on her, they're throwing balls, they're threatening to kill her. You know, she had to have this persona that was strong and like, you know, in a non-violent, non-aggressive way, fighting back. And he was teaching her those things. And that was one of my favorite parts of the book because I don't know, it's like something about that. I was like, yes, that's right. Stand up, you know, stand up. So I kind of like that. That was one of my favorite parts of the book. Um, and she raises her daughter. And this is really a good book especially if you have been through a lot in life and you need something to kind of give you that push of like just keep going you know there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow you just got to keep pushing for it this is that book that's what i like the most about this book i tend to like books that are extremely intellectual in nature um i like books that are colorful in the sense that my mind can just 
you know I like books that play like movies in my head this book didn't it didn't do all of those things what this book did this was a book that reignited my courage that's the kind of book this is and I, I really appreciated Melba for this book it was a a testament to what you can do if you put God first in your life if you treat people well um, and if you do the right thing that's what this book is about um, and I at first I wasn't too happy with it um, initially just reading it starting out but as the story started to develop the, the more I read it the more I liked this book I'm um, sorry guys my phone's ringing and there were some unexpected happenings in the book. Um, at one point, Melba lost her grandmother. Her grandmother was living at home with her and was one of the caretakers in addition to her mother. And her grandmother died unexpectedly. And Melba kind of experienced what I would say was anxiety probably. What I guess black people would call, she kind of had a nervous breakdown. That's what we like to call a nervous breakdown. She kind of had a nervous breakdown after she lost her grandmother, but all the things her grandmother had taught her stuck with her and they repeat and they constantly come up throughout the book. So that was really good. I like that. Um, she talked about having, she talked about God being her employer. And this was one of the, one of the important ideas that I got from the book as well is that you know when you go out into the world and you have a purpose you know you're not doing it for money you're not doing it for yourself you're doing it as a for greater good you know God has put this purpose in you he's giving you these skills he's giving you um knowledge he's giving you all these things and and you're out you're, you're to go out into the world and give these things back to the world you know this is essentially why Melba felt that it was so important for her to continue fighting and things like that. So I kind of like that. I like the, the the philosophy behind why she was doing what she was doing. Um, and I just think it was very, very good. She was a single mother. Oh, another thing I was impressed with. At 50 years old, she adopted a set of twins. She adopted a set of twins. She'd already had her daughter. She was a single mother raising her daughter. And at 50 years old, this woman, even after all these things she'd accomplished, she felt like she wasn't giving back enough. So she had lost a baby, which was a boy. And she saw a story on the television about two children. One of the, the twins resembled the son that she had lost, what she thought he would have looked like. Of course, this is a biracial child because her husband was white. And these kids looked like what she thought her son would have looked like. And she was just pushed to adopt them. And she just felt like she wasn't giving, giving back enough at the time. And she was like, an adoption would be great. Everybody advised her against it. No, you're too old. You just shouldn't do this. She did it anyway. And um, I just thought that that was, that was really powerful. That was a powerful message as well. Um, she just never stopped giving, you know, even though her life was rough and it was hard and she was going through ups and downs, left and right, you know, things were hitting her. She never gave up. She still had that tenacity, that grit, and she just kept pushing. And even when she, I think she had done so much and made so many different accomplishments, she still felt like it was enough. She was still giving back in the world. And that, that's what makes this book, I think, a great book, um, is, is that her story of overcoming was just inspirational in that sense so I did like it like I said it wasn't as you know it didn't have the big beautiful words and it 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 didn't flow through my brain like you know like a lifetime movie it didn't do all those things for me but it's definitely a book of courage and I appreciated it for that so it's one of the books that I think um, for the month of February it was Black History Month I read this book I think it was a good read um, I'd like to get into, I want some really, really deep, hard books. Like I, I thought this book would be really, really deep and hard. And what I mean by deep and hard, I'll give you guys, I'll read some other books, um, some African American author books that are deep and hard and going to hit hard and dig deep and pull up some ugly stuff. Just so you guys have an idea of what, what I'm talking about. This book doesn't do that in my opinion. Um, it does, it does help you to build a certain amount of courage it gives you hope for the future that's what this book is about so hopefully you guys will get this book go out and read it um 
I will read Warriors Don't Cry, hopefully sometime soon. Hadn't gotten to it yet, but this was a good one. I'm pushing myself to read more books by African Americans, read more books that are not popular, um, things like that. So this was one of those books. I did that. I'm proud of myself. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I hope you will go out and check out Melba's I Will Not Fear. This is Melba Patilia Bills, and that was a great book. So... Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.